All right, for 84, we have that the average value of a function f over the closed interval to the four is three, and if f of x is, a, is, is you know, greater than or equal to zero, so it's positive for all x into the four. What is the area of the region enclosed by the graph? Uh, y equals f of x, and the line is x plus two and x equals four on the x-axis. So it's bounded by the x-axis, And the lines x equals two and x equals four. And we're told f of x is greater than or equal to zero. So it's going to be above the x axis. And it's continuous. So um, we're told we're, we're given the average value. The average value is three. So, so this is a good example of how we can apply that the average value um, concept where the average value of f over some interval a to b will be equal to you know, basically the width 1 over b minus a, b minus a, or 4 minus 2 times basically the area of, like, let's say that value is 2, times the um, The area above above the above the x-axis. Um, I'm not saying this is going to make a rectangle, but it's, but if you remember from chapter four, that it's essentially going to be equal to the area of a rectangle, where the width is you know two, or this length is two, and the height is three, because so that's the average value. So even though we're going to take this integral from two to four of f of x dx, this this right here, two to four, the average value, this part becomes just three. So it's really just one half. I'm sorry, this part becomes two times three. It becomes this rectangle. Two times three or six. There is a rectangle base times height, two times three is six. Half of six is three. And then um, the answer will be, BC for average value function. For 85, the function f is continuous and increasing for x greater than negative one. The, above, the table above gives values of f at selected values of x, which is the best approximation for the limit as x goes to zero of e to the negative two f of x. Let's say, okay, so as x goes to zero, it's somewhere in here. F of x goes to zero. Because in between these numbers would be zero, zero. So then this is essentially taking e to the negative two times zero. Or just e to the zero. Which is just one. And so the limit is, the limit is just one. That's simple. Not 86. All right, cross section. I love these ones. They're telling me a lot of speed, but let's get through. So let R be the region in the first quadrant down by the graph. So y equals four cosine of pi x to the four, and y equals x minus two squared, shown here. Um, this is the region R. It's the base of a solid. For this, for the solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is an isosceles right triangle. So each cross section is perpendicular to the x axis. The perpendicular to the x axis. So we're looking at basically these lines like that. This will be a cross section, this will be another cross section. Now, these um, line segments make up the base of this um, isosceles right triangle. So, um, Essentially, what we have going on is drop the camera. I saw this right triangle, right angle with two sides the same length. And I want to kind of draw this out, but um, well, I guess I can kind of make sure you can visualize this. What's going on here is not very good, but 
I apologize. I'm, let me actually use a different colored pen. So this base right here, let's just pick that. That's our B. So the area, we wanted to basically first find the area of, the, of this triangle, which is one half base times height. But since this isosceles is one half base times base or one half b squared. So we need to find a we need to find a way to um represent b. And so b is a, this segment here. So it's a distance from this line to this line, or this this function minus this function. So let's call this f, let's call this g. So it's f of x minus g of x. Now, we're told that, so f of x would be the co four cosine of pi, so that's the one on top. So b would then be four times the cosine pi x over four, and then g of x would be the x minus two squared. So that'll be your base. And then so the area would be this whole thing squared. Let me, let me write let me rewrite this little meter down. The area of each of those cross sections would be equal to four cosine of pi x over four minus x minus two squared. This whole quantity squared. That's the area of each of those cross sections. Now, um, well, sorry, and times that one half as well. Let's times that one half. Let's multiply this times one half. So that's the area of each of those triangle, the isosceles, tri isosceles triangle cross sections. So again, think of maybe like you have like something like this popping out. What's that word thing? But you want so you want to find the volume of this like isosceles cross section uh, um solid essentially. So we want so we're going to integrate this. We're going to integrate this function from here to here, so from zero to two. So what we eventually what we have to eventually find is the volume of this object, which will be the integral from zero to two of one half four cosine pi x over four minus x minus two squared squared the whole thing integrated. And for this just use a graphing calculator, use the technology. Let's make sure we uh, I don't want to mess up. Concentrate. Let's see if I can get this done. I'm gonna have make the integral zero two. Um, I'm gonna multiply by I'm gonna multiply by one half of the very end, so I don't have much going on there. Inside here, I'm gonna have four cosine. Of pi x divided by four in there. Is that whole thing? Minus X minus two, that part will be squared. Let me put this whole thing in brackets. Actually. No, not right I want to put that whole thing. So that whole thing will be squared. Just to make sure I don't make a mistake. 
All right, now and then that divided by two because times that one half. And there we go, 1.775 five ish. The answer is A. All right, cool. I didn't mess up on that. All right, so I hope that helps. Good luck.